Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about monads. So let's get into it. Now monads is an interesting topic. Uh, the question in question was literally, Frederick, why is it that so few developers understand monads? Well, let me tell you. Because nobody uses them. That's why. So we can pretty much move on now. So what I want you to take away from this is that monads is this uh, functional programming paradigm that is so rare in the industry that nobody bothers learning it. It's not even part of most basic educations. Now, why is that? Well, it's very simple because it's, it's, a, it's a construct that in order for it to make any sense, you have to already have accepted quite a lot of other things within your code base. And the thing, the fact of the matter is, I know that there is a discussion. I know that people are talking about functional programming and they're excited about it. And the same thing goes for the people who are talking about reactive programming and so forth. You have all of these different paradigms, right? And oh yes, sure, they are cool. And I get excited about them as well. I mean, I was, re I was all giddy with excitement when I finished my first course book on functional programming and started to understand how functors work and I finally understood the power of composition. And I mean, the pinnacle for me of comp uh, functional composition and the value of, the, the, of functional composition was really only truly, like I really discovered and really felt that I got the value when I introduced monads into that equation. Because that means the interface of all my functions are going to be absolutely beautiful. And I mean, the reusability goes through the roof in my world. So these were things that made me very excited, but the, the problem is very simple. And that is that even though you may have all of these benefits, there are counter arguments and the dominant practice in programming today is object oriented programming or a hybrid or a version, or it's kind of hard sometimes to define exactly what one thing means because if it means it means something different to you and it means something different to me and, you know, uh, here I use the static function instead of um, uh, a field variable, like a field method or something like that. That doesn't really sound all that object oriented now, does it? But is it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the thing is that even uh, like most developers, they don't care about functional programming. I know, right? Sounds weird, but it's true. Most of them don't give a shit about pro functional programming. And the reason is very simple, because the people who are functional nerds, the people who are truly enthusiastic about functional programming and monads and so forth, they don't understand one fundamental thing. And the fundamental thing is that the programming that we do in the industry, the programming that most people do, do not require functional programming to succeed. It has never needed it, and it will probably never get to a point where you can just very clearly prove that a functional approach to this problem is so valuable that we should write in this fashion. And unless you have, and this is the problem, like unless you have a compelling reason, this is what all these evangelists and lobbyists and promoters and public speakers, that's what they're all trying to prove, all of them. Whatever they're trying to say to you, the one thing that they're trying to prove is the value of doing things their way. And they may get some people convinced, but they still are going to keep on hitting this wall. Hmm. We have all of these, uh, uh, these code bases and they're all written in an object-oriented fashion. Should we now introduce functional programming and start, start to make a big conversion here? Most people are going to say no, because the value proposition is too low, because there is no concrete reason as to why functional programming is going to give them all this benefit. The reason most people move from one tool, tool to another is because either an emotional thing, which is very common, you do it because you feel like it, you, you convince yourself that this is a good idea, or you do it for some concrete reason. You actually need a performance improvement or you actually know that this thing here is, has more developers or it's going to give you some tangible type of value. And functional programming has none of that. There is nothing that is going to definitively prove that functional programming is better than object-oriented programming. So you stay in a, in a stalemate. It's similar to, uh, convincing people to 
treat, I don't know, treat the meat, uh, the, that the meat industry needs to treat things more humane or that they're lying about heart disease or whatever. Like all of, like it, if you want to convince people, it's very hard because you need to really, really convince people. But if you just want things to stay the way they are, all you have to introduce is doubt or some like some reason, like an out, something that makes someone feel like, yeah, okay, yeah, I hear what you're saying, but it doesn't feel that critical. If you don't get that sense of urgency, it's very hard to make people move in any direction. And that's the hard, that's, that's why it's hard to change things overall. It's very easy to let things stay the way they are, but it's very hard to change them. So what I want you to take away from this for real this time is that monads isn't usually not in, and most people don't know about monads because of that simple fact. There is really not that many people who are doing functional programming in the industry in comparison to people who are just working either in a procedural fashion or an object oriented fashion and so forth. And functional programming and like monads, I would say, is on the high end of the theory regarding like just the functional world. So as you can imagine, very few people will spend time learning about something that is not directly valuable to them. Some people do, myself included, because I think it's interesting, but I have never, never, ever used a monad in production code without, like, uh, just in general, and I'm pretty sure that most people haven't. You may have, but let's be honest here, it's not gonna be the norm. It's much more likely that you're going to spend your time using functional programming and monadic structures for your own personal enjoyment or in some very specific situation, but it's very unlikely that that's going to be something that you're gonna get a lot of return on investment for, unless it's, you know, unless we're counting, counting emotional return on investment and coolness factor, because they are cool. That we have to give them. Have a great day.